Hey everyone, welcome back to my Logic Pro 11 Mixing Fundamentals course. In this video, we're going to take a look at phase issues in a multi-mic drum recording. When recording drums with multiple microphones, like close mics on the kick, snare, and toms, plus overheads and room mics, it's really easy for phase problems to creep in. These issues can result in thin, weak, or hollow-sounding drums, due to certain frequencies canceling each other out. We'll walk through how to compare the phase of different tracks and how to correct phase issues by inverting the phase of certain tracks, also known as a phase flip or known as inverting the polarity. It's important to note that phase problems can happen for several reasons. Sometimes it's due to bad mic placement, faulty gear or cables, or mics just being at different distances around the kit. However, in many cases, it might not be the recording engineer's fault at all. Phase issues can just be a natural result of the acoustic environment and the way sound waves interact in the room. The key takeaway here is to trust your ears and listen critically. A simple phase flip on a drum mic can completely transform the punch and power of your drum mix. So first, just to introduce what phase is and let you hear what it actually sounds like. I'm gonna mute everything except for the drums and I'm actually just gonna solo out the kick in and kick out tracks. So this is a one microphone that's inside of the kick drum and another microphone that's right in front of the kick drum. And I'm gonna get them roughly about the same level. And if you really zoom in, you can see that the waveforms for these two tracks are in phase. So here's the start of the kick in, and you can see that the kick out is slightly delayed because it's a little further away from the beater, but in general, it's still in phase because you can see the waveform goes up, it goes up down here, and then for the next half of the cycle, it goes down, and then it goes down here as well. And you know, beyond that initial transient, it's not quite as important, but you can see that the kick drum's in phase because the waveforms look similar. You know, if your kick out mic looked maybe something like this, where it's sort of the opposite of what the kick in is doing, that's an obvious giveaway that these two mics are out of phase for some reason. It could be an issue with the mic itself, it can be an issue with the preamp, and other times it can be an acoustical issue. So just to give you an idea of what this is gonna sound like, this is going to severely reduce the bottom end in the kick drum. Hear how the kick drum kind of sounds like hollow, like it doesn't have much body to it. Let's go ahead and undo that. And so now we're back in phase and let's listen to the kick now. Yeah, much more body, you know, much more punch as well. So usually a loss in bass in a particular instrument is a dead giveaway that there's some sort of like a phase issue going on. Now, another really common phase issue that's worth checking in all of your drum recordings is if you're using a snare top mic and then a snare bottom mic. Now I'm using a snare side mic and I don't use snare bottom, you know, this is one of the reasons why I don't use snare bottom mics very often anymore, but two, I just don't like the sound of snare bottom mics. But you can see that, you know, the phase of these two mics are on point, you know? You can see that there's maybe a slight delay from the, you know, the zero crossing of the snare top mic versus the zero crossing of the snare side, but they're pretty much in phase. But if you're using a snare top and bottom mic, it's extremely common for the bottom mic to be out of phase with the top mic. So the kick and snare here are really the most important um, thing to check. But what I like to do is I like to check the phase of the kick mic in the snare mic. And also I like to check the phase of the, the kick and snare mic in uh, the overhead mics as well. So let's take a look at the two kicks versus the two snares. So what you're seeing here is a kick hit and then you're seeing that same kick hit in the snare track. And what you can see is that when the kick goes up, the kick goes down in the snare track. And over here, you can see it goes up in the snare track, but goes down in the kick track. So what that means is the kick drum is out of phase in the snare tracks. And then let's find a snare drum. It's gonna probably gonna be kind of hard to see just because the uh, the mics, yeah. So <laughs> we're barely seeing anything in the, uh, uh, any snare in the kick mics. But if you click here, this will zoom up the waveform. And yeah, that's not really giving us, uh, you know, anything worthwhile. I mean, maybe you could say that, uh, you know, the snare is out of phase in the kick mics, but what's really more important is that the kick isn't out of phase in, in the other tracks or in the, in the snare track. So I'm gonna 
sort of just remember that for later. We may end up flipping the phase of the snare track. Um, let's go over to a section where there's a lot of symbols and stuff. Let's come over here somewhere and let's zoom in here. And what we're going to do is we're also going to check the phase of the pairs of overheads. And then we're going to check the, the phase of all of the overheads together. Now, a way to do this is to solo a pair of overheads. And then I'm just going to bring these up to a, like a little bit louder level. And then you're going to hard pan these. Even if you're not going to make them hard panned in the mix, go ahead and hard pan them. And then on your stereo output here, you're going to add a plugin under metering. And this is called the correlation meter. What the correlation meter does is it shows you the left-right phase relationship of the tracks that are playing. So it shows you whether you have a positive or negative phase correlation between the left and right channels. Positive meaning more in phase, negative meaning more out of phase. So when you have one track hard panned left and one hard panned right, if they're in phase, you'll see uh, this little white uh, sort of indicator here be more up toward the top of the meter. Um, so anything above zero is sort of considered acceptable. It's mostly in phase or, you know, if it's completely in phase, it'll be all the way up here at plus one. And if the tracks are kind of out of phase with each other, you're going to see this moving down into the negative. We want to avoid this moving down into the negative. So let's give a listen to each of our, uh, our sets, our pairs of overheads and room mics. <laughs> So that's mostly in phase. Um, let's take a look at maybe one of the kicks or snares here. And let's see what the snare looks like in that overhead track compared to the actual snare track that's here. And you'll see that delay. You know, you'll see that this goes down. The first cycle goes down and the first cycle here goes up. And you can see even in the other overheads, it goes up. The rooms are so far away from the drum kit that you can't really tell. And it doesn't necessarily mean that these things need to be aligned with the close mic, because remember, there's still a time delay between the close mics and the more distant mics. I'm just sort of looking at this as an indicator of, are these snare mics actually out of phase with the rest of the recording? Because that's what I'm, I'm starting to think now, because the kicks are out of phase in the snare tracks, and then the, the cycle is starting by going down in the close mics, but it's starting by going up here. However, the two uh, over the inner overheads are, are not out of phase with each other. They're, they're going to be OK. And then as I pan these more in, as I'm going to do in the actual mix, because they're a, like a, a really narrow pair, this is going to make them have a, a positive phase correlation. So they're going to be more in phase because they're both more toward the center of the mix. Let's move over to our main wide overheads here. And we'll do the same thing. Let's just solo those out, listen to them with the correlation meter pulled up, and we'll make sure that they are hard panned left and right. Yeah, a little bit of, you know, dropping down into the negative, but not too bad. Let's just double check that the waveforms uh, on the kick and snare hits generally look like they're in phase. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much in phase here. You can see that I think this is the kick, is it? No, that's the snare. Yeah, so this is all this means is that the snare drum is slightly closer to the left mic than it is to the right mic. Um, it's not a big issue here. We don't need to move anything. And you really don't want to start shifting the waveforms around because that can uh, cause other uh, issues and cause phase issues with other instruments. And then let's check the room mics. This is another area where we can have some phase issues. <laughs> Okay, so I think we do have some sort of a phase issue going on here. Let's try flipping the phase of one or both of these and see if we can, can't correct that. Um, so what I'm going to do is on the second room mic, I'm going to add the gain plugin in mono. We're going to flip the phase or invert the phase. And let's see if uh, this comes above zero more. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, so definitely still some minor phase issues even when I invert the phase of that second room mic, but definitely better when I invert uh, the phase of that second room mic. So let's just keep that in mind. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the all of the overheads, I'm gonna hard pan them, pull them all up to like roughly the same volume, just like so. And then with that gain plugin on the second room mic, I'm going to uh, kick in and out this phase invert. We're gonna check and see if it's improved more or less. Now, sometimes when you're working with uh, the room mics, because they're so far back from the rest of the kit, it can be kind of hard to tell, you know, which of the two is out of phase. But when I look at this, I see like an upward motion, an upward motion, up and up. So the cycle starts by going up in all four of the overheads. But then when I get down to uh, the room mics, it kind of starts going uh, down here in the first room mic, unless this is really the initial attack. Actually, that probably is. So this one goes up and this one kind of goes down. So I think I'm going to stick with an inverted uh, second room mic. I think that seems like the most logical thing to do here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the gain plugin and I'm just going to double click on this region. I'm going to make sure that I'm not in the track editor, but I'm in the file editor. And then you want to make sure that everything is selected in here. So you just click in here and hit command A. By default, it'll automatically select the whole thing. And then you go to functions and then you select invert. And what you'll see is that now they are in alignment. So at least the room mics are in alignment. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're in alignment with the overheads because they're so distant, but at least that's one thing that we've fixed here. Um, in addition to that, I wanna go back to those snare tracks. I wanna revisit those. So again, we said that the kick drum seems to be in phase with everything else, but it seems to be out of phase with the snare mics. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna flip the phase of both of the snare mics. So again, just double click, go to functions, invert, and then just make sure that you're in the file editor. I'll do the same thing here for the snare side. We'll go ahead and invert that. And let's see what we're sounding like now. Let's listen to everything. I'm just gonna pull the overheads back a little bit and the rooms, and then I'll go ahead and just do like a, a, a more narrow panning for the inner mics. We'll pull up the correlation meter and see what our, uh, our phase correlation is looking like. Okay, I think we're good there. Again, this is gonna be a different process for every single project that you mix. And the more microphones you have, the more spots there are for phase issues to arise. I'm not necessarily too worried about the tom mics because a, a good chunk of the tom mics are just going to be reduced or removed and i'm just going to mainly keep the tom hits in and reduce all of this other stuff in between so i'm not too worried about the tom mics at this point but one other thing we've got to determine here is what perspective are we going to mix our drum kit now the way i recorded this is I'm assuming a, a drummer perspective. So you're sitting behind the drum kit. So, you know, the overhead and room mics that are on your right side are gonna be called the right mics and the ones on the left are gonna be called the left. It's important to check this too because sometimes the, the stereo pairs will get mixed up. So they may call them left and right, but they're actually right and left. And this is especially a problem like if your room mics have been flipped um, you know, from what the overheads are. 
And also, when we go and we mix the toms, I'm panning them a little bit, right? So the floor tom is over to the right. I wanna make sure that the floor tom is actually in the right side in the stereo pairs, in the overheads and in the room mics. The hi-hat and ride cymbal can also be a, a dead giveaway because typically hi-hat's gonna be on the left side of the kit if you're the drummer, and ride is gonna be more on the right side of the kit. Again, if you're thinking drummer perspective. However, one thing I will point out here is that this drummer actually uses a right side hi-hat most of the time. He actually has two hi-hats, one standard hi-hat with a foot pedal off to his left, and then over to his right, there's another hi-hat that's on a stand, like a foot pedal extension stand. So in this song, when you hear hi-hat, you're actually going to be hearing that on the right side of the kit, not the left side of the kit as you normally would. And you can totally do, you know, audience perspective, listener perspective, if you want. I personally just like my mixes to kind of sound like I'm sitting behind the drum kit. You know, when you hear the fills go down, they go from left to right, from high tom to low tom. You know, ride cymbals usually on the right. Hi-hat's normally going to be on the left, but in this case, it'll be on the right. And then your kick and snare will be all uh, dead center. So I just like to double check those things. Let's go ahead and just solo out each of the pairs of overheads and let's make sure that uh, these are actually in the correct perspective. So we should hear more of the high tom in the left and more of the floor tom in the right. Sometimes this is easier to hear in headphones as well. I hear that, so that's good. Let's go over to the wide pairs. Yep. Yep, that's correct. And again, what I was saying about the hi-hat being on the right side of the kit, if that's true, then we should hear more of the hi-hat in the right side. Yeah, it seems to be a little bit more over to the right. So again, if you were going to do uh, audience perspective as opposed to drummer perspective, all you'd need to do is, you know, relabel these tracks and then flip the pans on them if you want to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with drummer perspective on this, but that's another really important thing to check. Make sure that you don't have any overheads that are flipped around or room mics that are flipped around because that can further cause phase issues and phase cancellation in your mix. Okay, so next up, we are going to jump into time alignment with the drums to fix some minor timing issues in the drums, but I'll save that for the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.